Welcome into another episode of A Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 104. 104. It's two years. 52 of 52 is 104. Yes. This is, so this is a second anniversary special. That it is. Cool. That it is. Exciting. Yeah. It's fun. We got a lot of good questions by our listeners in the discussion group. Mm-hmm. So we're going to answer those and do some readings and... Uh, talk about other things that our listeners answered, and yeah. It'll well, be congratulations. It's like a milestone. It's weird to think that it's been two years. Yeah, it is. Congratulations to you, too. It was, yeah, we've grown so much in two years. Looking a, back. A lot has changed. Yeah, a lot has changed. And it's still changing. Yeah. It isn't over. It's a, it's been a wild ride, I have yeah. to say, but it's been fun documenting it and, you know, being able to look back and see the progress that we've made and the things that we've been through. And that's why we like to share with our listeners so you guys can watch too. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Well, before we get into this special episode, do you have anything you want to share from last week? Yes. Last week we did Nurturing Your Inner Child. Yep. And we had um, a listener that commented on this. She said, I just listened to this. I thought I had healed after raising my children. When you said, give your inner child a hug, I stood at the kitchen sink and cried. I'm so glad I found you too. And that's, that's Melissa. Wow. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. That, yeah, that makes me feel, it makes me feel yeah. good that we're able to, you know, that you're happy that you found us and, you know, sad that right. you know, we made you cry. But at the same right. time. Clen- uh, crying is very cleansing. Yeah. And it does help to get some of that <clears throat> stuff out. That was a very heavy episode for me. I had a hard time even listening back to it because you do, you, you think that it's over, that, that you've healed from <clears throat> your childhood trauma. And then all of a sudden in the, you know, if you're going through the spiritual journey, especially it's like, it's there and it's right. like, until you, until you heal this part of you, you mm-hmm. can't move on in the journey. You know, you can't. And you know, it's not like to be a downer, but it's like, are you ever completely healed? I I don't know. I can't really answer that. I know that you carry scars that feel like sometimes it hurts, but you know that you're still surviving and living and moving forward. I think like what you're saying, the biggest part is you just have to acknowledge it. Yes, you do. And that's in order to move forward. You do. You have to recognize it. it. And by doing that, you somehow open up a doorway that gives you the ability to deal with it. Right. I mean, there are other things you can do to deal with it. We've talked about that too. But, right. But it's that door of, yeah, like acknowledgement. It kind of all of a sudden, it ushers yeah. in this new thing of like change. Right. Which is terrifying for some of us. But Yeah, it is. We've talked many times about how life kind of feels like a video game sometimes, and I'm Mm -hmm. kind of learning how to play this game better and how to keep things progressing instead of regressing Uh is kind of the theme of the game is to find the things that are that are there to help you and take advantage of them Mm -hmm. and not do the things that are there to set you back. So it's kind of all just a balance. But that nurturing of the inner child is dealing with those things that happen to us when we were a child, but they need to be dealt with because it's a part of the story. It's a part of the game. Not, you know, I don't want to say game in a, you know, you think about it that way, but that's really what it is. It's, it's learning how to deal with those things because that's where your lessons come from. And it's hard sometimes for people to see that we want to believe, you know, why these things happen to me or, but you know, they happen for a reason and they do. It's hard to accept that, but it, it, once you do, it makes Life, look at the way you look at things a lot easier, you know. And I do believe that once you go to the other side, a lot of these questions of why did that happen to me or why was that a part of my story? There you learn more why. Yeah. Here it's more of how do you deal with it? What do you do? How do you treat others because of it? Do you carry that forward in your own relationships, in your own family? Things like that. Yep. 
Absolutely. So. Totally agree. So, but that's all that we, I have from last week. Great. Well, yeah. thanks again, Melissa. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate all right. that. Well then, episode 104. 104. Second yeah. anniversary. How I don't know what you have in store, but we'll find out. Well, like I said, I have some, uh, our listeners asked us questions. What I did is I created a survey monkey, which is a survey that you can have people fill out. It's anonymous. Right. And I asked 10 questions. And so we're going to talk about the 10 questions. Cool. Uh, and which... Three of those are asking us questions. So nice. there's a lot of those. And then I'm going to throw some readings in there. So I think that we'll have a pretty full episode. I might not even get to all of this because cool. we got a lot. So Very nice. So um, one of the first things that I asked our listeners <clears throat> was how long they've been listening to our show. I'm curious, you know, if mm-hmm. we're keeping our listeners, you know, are they, we're bringing in new. So 60% of the people that took this poll said that they have been with us from the very beginning. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Thank you. Yeah. 60%. We appreciate that. And we, we hope that, you know, we're entertaining. Yeah. Makes us happy. <laughs> I'm sure we are at times and then I'm sure we're not. Yeah. Times. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see, 10% said one to two years, 20% said six to 12 months, and then 10% said less than a year. So I think, you know, we, we're still bringing new people in and we, we love that. That's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you to all the percentages. Yes. We really appreciate it. This, yeah. We didn't think that we were going to have this kind of <clears throat> following listeners when we started. Yeah. You know, we had no idea what was right. going to happen, but it's been really nice to see this blossom. Yeah, I think we just kind of want to facilitate a way of thinking and hearing and talking and sharing about things that yeah, maybe some people don't want to talk about. For sure. Well, and, and then I was curious how many of our listeners w- heard about us from ways other than actually personally knowing us. Mm-hmm. Like, is this just a bunch of our friends following us? Do you know what I mean? Right. So I asked that question, and actually 60% of the listeners learn about us on social media. Cool. And forty percent know us personally. Nice. So we appreciate every like Thank every you, 60, single 40. one of you. Yeah, and it's cool that our friends listen to. <clears throat> Absolutely, I, I love that. I love all you guys. Yeah, yep, me too. So I'm gonna do. Let's do a couple of these questions that people have asked. So uh, on this survey, I had put questions for Danny, questions for Samantha, and Uh-oh. then you know questions or or whatever you have for both of right. us. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> You're a dork. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then let's find a humorous one. Hey, I got, let's start off with a humorous okay. one, shall we? Okay. Uh, how <clears throat> long are you gonna? How long do you plan to let the beard grow? <laughs> the, if you haven't That's... seen pictures of us, Danny has a, a beard that comes down to you know I don't yeah. know what would you say my chest. Yeah, it, like the middle of his chest. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's it's very um, it brings in people. <laughs> it, it attracts people when we're out it's like who's that is that billy gibbons no yeah not but no so i wasn't surprised it attracts so anyways, crumbs too i gotta be careful oh that. that too yeah it's definitely <laughs> like it needs a bib yeah so but would you like to answer that question that's I'm a great question curious about this too yeah. i don't even know it, the funny part is is i remember i always had i've had some sort of facial hair hair from my as long as i could yeah i was gonna say my whole life um, <laughs> yeah, since I came out, <laughs> but I think when I first met you, I just had a goatee, no mustache or anything, just a goatee, mm-hmm. not long, yeah. just short. Yeah, well, a little bit of a scruffy beard, I think, maybe. I'm talking years ago. Oh, years. Okay. That's yeah, when like contradiction me. days. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had when you bleach blonde hair mm-hmm. and, and like a dark goatee. Yes. Then I started wearing the scruffy beard, and then when we decided to kind of just take a change in our paths career wise, I'm like, man, I'm just gonna let this thing grow. Yeah. Instead of buzzing it all the time. So <laughs> Yeah. And that was one of your first questions when I said, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna grow my beard. And you're like, exactly how long? And it was only maybe a couple inches long at this point. You're yeah. like, exactly how long are we talking about? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I'm just gonna let it go and see what happens. Yeah. Um mine kinda hits a stage where uh it doesn't look healthy if I let it go too too long. Not like so my hair. Mm. This is about as long as it gets, and it's work. Yeah, you know, he works on re- it. It, it requires mm-hmm. like brushing and, and oils and trimming and 
takes very good care of his beard. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I try because yeah, it doesn't. I don't hop out out of bed looking like that. Sometimes no. it's all like zigzag. You're like, what happened? Look at accordion. <laughs> and I think some people think that if you have a beard like that, that it's like there's a dirtiness equated with it. No, and there isn't. No, definitely. I, I'm a freak. I, yeah, you know, <laughs> no, definitely. I have to like keep it clean. Yeah. So, but. Yeah. But yeah, so probably not too much longer. This is about it. Yeah. I'm you know, I'm used to it. And if you shaved it off, it would probably totally trip me out. <clears throat> yeah, I've threatened it a couple of times and both you if and I Marina were like, head, "No." Yeah. yeah. But my yeah. mom, you know, she doesn't like it and I could see why. Moms just don't They probably don't want their a reminder maybe of that their aging as yeah. they see their child aging, you For know. For sure, yeah. And it's aging gray with sure, like yeah. stripes, you know, but so yeah. Um, but she's not a big fan of it. And she's always trying to push Marina, like, tell your dad to <laughs> shave that thing. Yeah. Um, but Marina's even said, you know what? It's Graham. It's part of his personality. Yeah. It's kind of become it is. him. And so I don't know if that's necessarily true. I enjoy it. I don't have any hair on my head. Yeah. So this is one way during the winter that I stay warmer. <laughs> But there have been times during the summer where I'm like, I just want to hack this thing off. Yeah, for but sure. Anyway, so that's that. Yeah. Okay. Well, this isn't the beard show, so let's Sorry. move on. I know. <laughs> 20 minutes later, he's like telling you everything <laughs> he puts in his beard and how long he sits <laughs> and brushes it for. All right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Whoever asked that question knew Probably what gave. Yeah, probably. Probably gave. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Don't I'll assume. take one now. All right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, are you able to read Danny? So it's an interesting question because I am, but I don't purposely. Like, I, we now can tell when each other's energy is even the slightest bit off. Mm. And we usually absorb it. So, like, the other day, I don't know, you were just like, er, about something. And I said, your energy is off and I'm just not doing this until it's back to normal. And we're both, like, kind of the same way now. It's just right. like, no, it has to be, you know, that really helps us. As right. far as reading him psychically... Um, I can read, yes, things that are going to uh, happen, um, but it's different for how it is for our family. Like, mm -hmm. I get more specifics with, with other people, mm -hmm. but for me, it's mostly, like, the outcome right. or what's coming instead of, like, small details. That's for both of us, really, I would say. Yeah. I mean, again, we don't know the outcome because if it hasn't happened it hasn't happened yet right exactly but there are definitive things about my life and things that pertain more to me per se and you know whether right. it's uh you know my family or my career goals or whatever you've been very accurate yeah yeah, and, and something else that I was thinking, too, about this is that I don't try to, like, get into your mind. Like, right. if there's something that I can tell is wrong, I'm not going to, like, go to my psychic abilities and be like, tell me what's wrong with him. Uh, I'm going to come to you first and ask you. Because we talk. Right, exactly. Right. Sometimes, like, when some, when you're not, you know, maybe you're just in a, a mood and then I might, mm -hmm. my guides might tell me, but it comes in differently. It comes in more from, like, my mom, like, you should know, you know, this but it's not intrusive. Right. It's like, I don't want to use my abilities to be intrusive on other people's lives, especially right. my husband's, yeah. you know, sometimes you just know things, but I don't think that I'm told things that I'm not supposed to know. Right. You know, so. I, it doesn't really bother me because I feel like most of what I'm thinking about, you're going to hear about at some yeah. point. Yeah. It helps that we're really, really open and honest with each other because right. if maybe if we were in a relationship where I, I wasn't sure about things you I know see that yeah. then yeah it might throw me off but like yeah it, th yeah not like that so right yeah but that was a great question very yep uh let's do one for both of us okay do either of you have psychic relatives well i know you do i do yes i actually um not confirmed when they were alive but my grandmother always showed signs of it. She, I really thought that, but I never like really asked because right. I figured if she really did know, if she really was psychic, that there was things that she would have known, like my mom's death right. and she didn't. Right. Um, so I never really figured that she was psychic, right. but then like 
she, I, I knew immediately after she died, like you could just feel it from her. I, right. I could, it was, it was a trip. Like, um, when I, I've talked about this before that I kept hearing, you know, it's just a shell after she died. I really feel like that was her immediately getting to me and saying, you right. know, but, um, I was also told, I can't remember if it was Amy that told me this, that her sister's. That they yeah. come from a long line of psychics. Yeah. Um, that it goes way back in the family, but that they were too afraid to talk about it, which right. I understand. My mother has was always drawn to it. It was something I was raised with. I even went to a therapist inside of an Akashic bookstore. So it's always been a part of my life. Mm. I, I can't even tell you how many psychic readings I had in my life before I became a psychic. Right. So I do believe, too, that my mother had abilities that um, she didn't really talk about. Right. I think we all have that intuition, you know, of course. It's just how much you use it. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely people that have it more naturally. And, and my, my maternal side of the family absolutely had it. Yeah. Yeah. Not my dad's side, but my mom's side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really aware of any on mine, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, nobody said anything. No. But you're kind of psychic by marriage. I could see why <laughs> your grandmother and her sisters were, in particular, more not forthcoming about it. Yeah, I mean, they grew up in like a war torn World yeah. War II era. World War II, yeah. Where they were kind of hiding out. Period. So yeah, it wasn't a good time. So no. yeah, you definitely, you know, you don't want to draw attention to yourself. No, it wasn't. You know, what. How long before that, 100 or 200 years before that, that they were burning witches? Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long. No. You know, yeah. it's just not something that you want to, Yeah, you know, I get it. Things are different now. Now you go places and it's like psychic stuff everywhere. <clears throat> like clothing has, you know, different psychic things on it, mm -hmm. Ouija boards and all this. And I'm so glad that we're embracing it. Like there's a couple stores yeah. that are selling puzzles that are tarot cards, right. you know. It's nice that people are seeing that it's not like hocus pocus it well i mean really some people might look at it that is is oh that's blasphemy or that's that oh, is hocus do, pocus yeah. or mm. that's just propaganda that's that's marketing oh okay yeah somebody might be making a dollar off that but we all got to make a dollar yeah but the the part that i feel when i walk in and seeing is just an enlightenment of, yes there's a general enlightenment because it's not just one thing it's multiple things yeah. and maybe that's the message here is that it's it's really the essence of what we're our belief in in this afterlife in this this nirvana this heavenly place uh -huh. you know yep um absolutely yeah yep for sure it's a it's nice to see yeah uh i'm gonna do a reading okay Let's do that. So I asked um, in the discussion group if anybody wanted me to do a reading for, for them, any kind of reading. Uh, but I posted this this morning, so I only got a few responses, so I'm going to try and get to them all. all right. But the first one I want to do is from Melissa, the Melissa that sent that comment earlier. Okay. She says, hi, Samantha. I am a pretty happy person. I have a great family that I adore. Unfortunately, I have been dealing with health problems for years. I recently found out the medication I've been told to take for 25 years has totally wreaked havoc on my whole system. I should have only taken it for a few months. For the last 15 years, I have seen countless doctors who basically tell me I'm fat and lazy. Fat, yes, but lazy never. The question is, will I ever get my energy back? Will I ever get out of the brain fog and be able to enjoy my life once again? Thank you for all you do. Okay, so let me tune in to your energy, Melissa. And I want you to know that the reason why this is important to me is because I've kind of been there. Like, I have a lot of these weird health problems. I don't, I don't have a medication that messed with me like that. But when I started my spiritual journey, I was forced off of a lot of medications that I thought that I needed. Forced off of them. Like, they became unavailable, or a doctor said, you don't need that, or whatever. It started making me sick. These things happen yeah. to us for a reason. So... You know, I, I don't know exactly with what your doctor's telling you about this medication, but it's most likely that you're not supposed to be on this medication and that's why you were forced off of it. Mm -hmm. um, things like that don't make sense at first when it happens. It's actually happening to me right now with a supplement that I take that mm -hmm. it's been really, really hard for me to get. And I look at this and I'm like, why is this so hard to get? Are they trying to force me off of it? It's just, it's natural, you know? But we have to kind of examine this. Uh, I don't know. You comment a lot and I don't know that we've ever talked really, um, but I, I imagine and I feel like you're on a spiritual journey here. 
partner. And a lot of times in the spiritual journey, there's things that the other side does uh, and the universe does to try and get you to cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I started my spiritual journey, I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I ate lots of junk and I drank soda and I did all kinds of things that were really, really bad for me. Not that I don't now. Right. But I Not learned... Not to that extent. No. At all. I learned along this journey that when those things are gone, you feel better physically. When you eliminate those things from your diet that are bad for you or whatever it is in your life that's making you sick, even mentally that's keeping you down physically, once you get rid of those things in your life, then your body starts to feel better. And I feel like that's what's happening for you. And when the doctor, I'm sure that I, okay, I'm hoping that the doctor did not say you're fat and lazy because that's not the case at all. No. We all have issues. And like I, myself, I turned to food. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people do, you know, and so we get, we get nervous or we're bored or, or whatever. And we turn to food. It's something that we go to. It doesn't make us fat or lazy. It just is what we, it's a coping mechanism, but I feel like learning to take better care of yourself, not just in that area, but mentally, mentally is a huge thing because I feel like you're not, um, like, well, the word that I heard was cleansing. So it's like you're holding a lot of things inside and not letting them out and they're becoming toxic inside your body. So you, like when you were saying, you were saying she's the one that sent the, the about standing at the kitchen sink and started crying. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. You're cleansing. cleansing. You need more of that. Yeah, you got to get it out. You got to get it out. You got to detox. And I'm not talking right. about in the way that you don't eat or right. you, you know, flush your system right. with juice or whatever. You have to detox the shit from your life. Excuse my French. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy to talk with you more about this. But I feel like I see you being active and healthy. And I actually see you thinner than you are now. So I feel like if cool. you can do this, if you can kind of take these steps to not focus so much on the eating and the, you know, the way your body's feeling, but more on your mental health and pushing yourself there first that the physical will follow. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good place to start. But I would love to talk to you more about this, yeah. you know, if you that's want to cool. talk about it. So, cause I could keep going, but we've got a lot here to cover. So, Great. so I hope that that helps. Nice. A little bit. So, okay. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have for you for the questions? I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Have you developed your psychic ability since being with Samantha? Oh, yeah. Not to her level at all, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of times he doesn't even realize it and he'll say something and then like <clears throat> later on in the day it'll happen or, mm. you know, it's, it's, I think you're still, I mean, I do retrospect, see things in retrospect as well, but I think you're still a lot on that, that it doesn't hit you that that's a psychic thought until you look yeah. back in retrospect. Right. And that gets less and less. Then you just start to trust yourself. Like, right. oh, that, I, that just came out of nowhere. Or I saw that and you start to become more, yeah. you know, but yeah, you have for sure. Yeah. I think because it's your work, you're way more in tune with it. You need to be. Yeah. Um, for me, it's more of. I like, I don't know if, if extracurricular, you know, would be the way to put it, but it's, it's, I'm not nearly as good at it. And my mind is somewhere else. A lot of the, you know, like, yeah, with the technical things and yeah, it's not your creating area. stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely, it is, I have, I have gotten it through osmosis and being around mm -hmm. you and <clears throat> because you are so good, there are well, there's angels, dead people around Everywhere. all the okay. time. So <laughs> I I have um, wonderful experiences yeah. because of that. Yeah. You it's know, it's definitely, yeah, changed both of our lives. But it's. I mean, I don't mean like daggers floating across the room. Not those well, kind of no. experiences. But no, I, no. I definitely <laughs> get clear messages and get clear um, sensations that somebody's here. Yeah. You know, I, I get signs. It's. Yeah, it doesn't scare me. It's, it's, this is amazing. Yep, this is what I wanted this world to be. Yeah, something more magical than the drab, dreary, angry bullshit that I see going on all the time. Yeah, exactly. But I chose to start looking at it deeper. Right. That's what changed for me. Yeah, you know. you've always been a deep thinker, but this definitely made me focus deeper. Uh huh. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. 
Uh, so, okay, so that made me remind me of two of these questions here that I think kind of go together. Where was it? Uh, okay, what does it mean when you say you feel spirits? I hear people say that after a loved one passes, but I've never felt it. Um, I think that when, like, okay, when we hear these things, we're expecting something that it's not. And when we're expecting something that it's not, we're blocking out what it actually is, if that makes sense. Right. I can't really describe the feeling of somebody being there, but one of the ways is that like when somebody passes when and you're crying and it's like that <gasps> crying, mm. they're there. They've got yeah. they've got their hand on your shoulder. That's they're, why it feels so intense. Yeah. When you listen to music and you get goosebumps, they're there. These are physical ways that you're feeling it for me. Um like I feel my mom because sometimes I'll just get the tears or you know i just know she's there she'll do stupid things like the other day it was rock is it rockwell i always feel like somebody's watching me mm. three times i heard it on the radio <laughs> as like a reminder of we're here hi right you know so i know in those ways that she's there but there's also that mother-daughter connection that i just know her energy after right. all these years of her being on the other side and so i feel her right for somebody that's maybe never lost somebody or or this is this whole spirituality thing is new to them. Mm. You may not feel anything, right? Yeah, those three same songs could come on and you would be oblivious, like it wouldn't really mean much to you. But no. for you, there is a direct connection. You're able to directly connect. So these things in your senses are heightened. So these things get your attention. Yes, now. as where before you were kind of just you know, an analogy kind of walking around in a fog, like right. you're not really noticing all yeah. these certain things that are put there for your attention. I'm not sure what people are expecting when it comes to like signs, like that type of thing, you know, that your loved one is around, but mm -hmm. usually it is these things like music numbers right. and, and that it's not like, things falling off the shelves or no I, there is one example that i'll share which happened to me the other day and i hadn't had this happen here yet but um the band as on our second drummer and the previous drummer had a friend that would come around once in a while and hang out we all knew him uh, this guy named don and he would come here and hang out sometimes and listen to us rehearse um and one night he left and he messaged you and said i felt somebody tickling my ear when I was in the band room. Oh, yeah? And he was like, I brought somebody home. He said something oh. like, I brought somebody home with me. Or something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, I think yeah. I brought somebody home with me. And he was spooked for a minute. Like, yeah. he brought some spirit. And, I about that. And he felt the tickling on his ear. And you read for him. And mm -hmm. you're like, no, ding dong. <laughs> That's your... Was it his mom? It was his mother. His yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. That's your mother. Yeah. Trying to get your attention. And she didn't follow you home. She's been with She's you. She's with you all the time. Yeah. So we were having a conversation, you and I, a couple of days ago. I don't know what, but I was standing in the doorway from the garage to the studio, and I got this sensation like someone was tickling oh, me yeah. with a feather on the back of my calf, like my leg. <laughs> and I didn't have, I had shorts on. So I kind of itched it, thinking, oh, it was just an itch, or maybe it was something crawling on me for a yeah, second. Yeah, get it There's off. Yeah. nothing on me. And and we kept the conversation going. I didn't say anything to you about it at the moment, I don't think. I don't... I remember you telling me, but I can't... I don't think it was at and the And then moment. a minute later, I felt it again, higher up. Uh-huh. You know? And I was like, ah, you're messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely do that, too. So then once I realized that, I just chuckled. I was like, ah, you got me. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good way of saying you feel them because you can that feel them physically as well. That was an actual feeling, yes. Uh -huh. And I do get that. My It actually took me the longest time to figure it out. But my grandfather, when I was younger, would pinch my side. Mm. And he would say to me, it was like his way of, you know, if he was telling a joke and I didn't think it was funny, he would be like, not funny, McGee. And he would pinch my side. Yeah. And I didn't, I totally forgot about that. And then one day I felt the pinch and I was like, why is somebody keep pinching me? And then I heard, not funny, McGee. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it totally came back, you know? So a lot of times, too, we don't realize that what we're feeling or right. the sensations or what we're seeing is <clears throat> our loved one. Right. But these things are all our loved ones. It's, yeah. it's they're not, from for most people, they're not going to materialize in the room. No. I've asked my mom, come on, show me. Come on, I have to do it. 
It doesn't happen. They won't. I have. Can I see her in my third eye? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, very well, but materialize in front of me, you know, like Star Trek, like being beamed to the next room. No. So I think that if, you know, you're thinking that's what you're going to feel or you're going to see that that you're setting your expectations too high, right. you know, just, I don't know. But if you, you, we've talked about this in recent past episodes about, and I've mentioned it about like the guitar pick thing yeah. and setting signs, asking for certain things to happen and you may doubt it. My when I brought that one in as a as a choice, you doubted it, right? And then it became like yes. tenfold. So I realized, don't doubt. Yes. If you ask for a particular sign, most likely you're going to get it. Yeah. I mean, not it, no. Don't put a million dollars in my bank account, <laughs> and I'll know you're there. Yeah. Sorry, you're going to be waiting it's a little bit an much. eternity. Or, Make those things fall off the shelf right. over there. It's not that you can't make a million dollars eventually right. and end up in your bank account, but don't set that as a sign because you'll be disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. Make it something realistic that's that's you know tangible even yeah. or or visible or anything like that. I could see like spirits doing a funny where like you find a million dollar bill like the fake million dollar mm-hmm. bills, something like that. Yeah. Like they really like to do that kind of stuff. They like to see us laugh. Yeah. So if you ask for something and it's like far out of reach, they might look for something like that to use to be like, well, here it is, but mm-hmm. you know, not in the way you wanted it. <laughs> and it's <laughs> never, you know what I mean? They're they're They want you to test them. Yes. They want you to open your mind to believe that they are actually really there and that that's where you will be Yeah. when, when it's your turn and that, that you're, you're not dead. Yep. You you have a conscience, you have you have all of except your body. I I can't say that I've had skepticism since I learned about my abilities. I have not. I have I totally 100% believe what we preach. However, because this is my life, sometimes I doubt the messages that I get for myself mm-hmm. and the things that I see for myself. That would and be hard, yeah. It is hard because it's like, because there are bad things sometimes. Like, you know, I, I do see things before they're going to happen that I may be like, oh, come on. Like, I don't want to deal with that. But then I see a lot of really good things as well. The thing is, is that at the time I might not believe that, but in retrospect, I see it. So now over like things that have happened over the last couple of months to us, I believe it now. I believe that we can 100% create the reality that we live in. Absolutely. You can. I do. Yep. So, um, yeah, I can't remember what the question was. Oh yeah. How you feel spirits. (laughs) This is what we do. We're like philosophy chat. We go, we went off, off, but that's okay. But yeah, I hope that that kind of explains. It's different for everybody of how you feel spirits. Um, I sometimes get anxiety attacks if I'm not paying attention. And then I just know that there's a spirit that's trying to get my attention. My left ear will ring. You get the same thing. It's like a very loud in Mm -hmm. the left ear. And sometimes it gets really bad until you pay attention to it. That's something else. That's a good point. Okay, let's see a question for both of us now. Which one of these? This is a good one, I think. Has your spirituality helped your marriage? It sounds like it has. Any tips? You want me to go first? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. I I think that whether it's spirituality, whether it's uh, golf, um, you know, the ocean, anything that you can connect with, another person in a relationship yeah. on a level like that, it's going to help you. Yes. Um, I know that, you know, you, you have some friends that do this and maybe some of their spouses or significant others aren't as open-minded, right? but they might be younger in their journey. Yeah. They might have different issues, you know, that have affected them. I don't know. You know, right. I am more of a, <clears throat> kind of a go with the flow until I feel like it's this is not right yeah you know um and nothing's shown me if anything it's the complete opposite yeah I'm like wow how have I been oblivious (laughs) I just I haven't it's just that ability to see this thin veil that's there yeah and it it's something that's part of the awakening I Mm realize that there's something there is a barrier but there's something beyond this and I can yeah. connect to that. So I can ask it for help right. in my life. Yes. 
and I was going to point that out is that one of the things that has helped us the most is actually the guidance that we've received from the other side. Oh yeah. Because I will hear things for myself. Um, like, you know, if we were having an argument or something and, and maybe I would say something that I shouldn't have said, I'll hear my mom. Maybe you shouldn't have said that yeah. because she's trying to correct my behavior. Right. So that's almost where your higher self needs to come in if you don't have your mom in your ear all the time. Yeah. Because some of it is my higher self, too. But it guides you to what is right and what is yeah. is wrong in your marriage. It's about accepting each other the way that you are too mm. because like they put us together for a reason yeah because we're very 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 similar and yeah. it just works and we're very different but and we are we're very, very different similar. yes but we have a lot of the things that are beneficial mm. in a marriage to be similar we are and that helps a lot and so i feel like the match was definitely put there that we could work on things our marriage was not bad before the spiritual journey no. it's just that's i think sometimes um, you know, you have your own traumas that you bring in from other relationships and you forget that those are from other relationships. And so you might be holding on to them. Right. And so we both had to learn how to let go of the past traumas yeah. and realize that we're not going to treat each other like the other one did. And I think on our spiritual journey, that probably has been one of the biggest lessons for me. In yeah, I had to learn that you are not my previous relationship yeah. and I'm not yours, you know, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a connection and there was a chemistry right off the bat. Yeah. You know, since the first date. Right. There was always, and we had fun together. Yes, that's It just thing got sure. deeper. Yeah. You know, and, and then this, boom, this happened and... Yeah. And it was like, that just felt like... Um, like the roots just went in really yeah. deep, you yeah. know, at that point. And then I felt much more secure. Right. Yeah, for sure. There was a message that I got before I even knew that I was a psychic that I helped me. And, and I, I thought to myself it was just an epiphany. But I think that these moments that we think are epiphanies mm -hmm. are actually messages from my higher self or the other side. But what this message told me was that I had to stop thinking that you're thinking the way that I'm thinking. Right. And because you weren't and men and women think very differently yeah. and i think that that's what hurts a lot of relationships is that a woman is like well why doesn't he want to do this why doesn't he why doesn't he bring me flowers i'm not saying do that because you know right. that's not i'm just saying why doesn't he bring me flowers why doesn't <clears throat> he do this why doesn't he do that he probably doesn't think about it because he's got his mind on a million other things and it's not personal. You're thinking that you want flowers, but he doesn't know that you want flowers is what I'm saying. This is just, you right. know, an example. Okay. Sure. He can't read your mind. So mm. you're sitting there mad at him because he's not bringing you flowers when he has no idea what you're mad about. This is what women do. I'm not saying that, you know, that this is just how it goes. You know, men aren't perfect. Women aren't perfect. We both have our things. But in this journey and being basically having a marriage counselor in my head all the time, it's really taught me these things. And it's really helped me to see that the more that I can not live in your head, the better off I am. Right. And I think a lot of women do do want to live in their their husband's heads or whatever. And you said a great thing then, too, was fun. It's right. important to have fun together, right. whether you have kids or not. You know, I know it gets things, life gets right. rough and things get busy. You got to make yeah. time for that for each other. But you also have to make time for your own interests. Yes. Very your, important. Your own thing that's that's unique to you. Um, doesn't mean that your partner could do the same thing, but you need your own time doing that particular thing or yes. a multitude of things you like to do. Because then it makes coming back together more bittersweet at the end of the day or whatever. Yes, When absolutely. you're done with your task, you know. So that's important, you know. Yes. I think sitting around each other in that negative kind of thinking 24-7. Yeah. Especially in a pandemic. Yeah. When everybody's been locked up. Yeah. It isn't healthy. No, it's not. You know? It's not. Yeah, but... Yeah, you got to have fun together. You got to be able to have a good time and, yeah. you know, let your hair down and, and just, you know, I don't know. We've learned a lot. I could probably go on and on and on for hours, but those are some of my best tips that I think I can. I agree. Get. Those were good. Yep. Um, <clears throat> that reminded me of something that somebody. Oh, 
I wanted to read this. I, I think you already, I already read you this, but this wasn't a question for you. It was just a statement. Mm-hmm. Um, they said, no, I don't have any questions, but Danny, you are the coolest and most open-minded dad and husband. Kudos. Oh, that's very sweet. It is nice. Yeah, it's, you did. Yeah. did. You read that to me um, the other night and that one brought me tears. Whoever yeah. said that, thank you. I, you know what, as a parent, you, you want to be the best example that you can be, but you know you're infallible and imperfect as a human being, so you're never going to be everything. You want to try to not do the things that maybe your parents did to you. Um, I just wanted, because our child's an only child, you know, yeah. and she doesn't have a huge group of um extended family with younger members close to her. Yeah. I wanted to lift her up and I wanted to encourage her. I wanted to make her not afraid to go out in the world and be independent. Yep. Um and not rely on <clears throat> anybody else. I don't care if she is in love with a man, a woman, a dog, it doesn't matter to me. No. I just want her to be happy. Yeah. But I want her to be independent and not have to rely or get stuck somewhere that she doesn't want to be. Yeah, for sure. And I also wanted her, first and foremost, to never take anybody's bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the first and foremost for me is to find your voice and stand up for yourself. Yeah. In a respectful way. But I appreciate that comment. I I don't um, claim to be any of those <laughs> things, but I do appreciate it very much and, yeah. and the acknowledgement because... Uh, I love my kid more than anything. Yeah, you know. Besides my wife, I, I, I'll do anything for both of them. So, yep, I have to agree with with what this person said that you are a great husband and and dad. Thanks. <laughs> my tears, stop it! <laughs> as soon as we sat down and started recording, I was like, uh oh. There's no, there's no tissues here. Uh-oh. You're not going to need tissues for Q and A. Well, yeah, I am because I'm doing greetings. But yeah, here I am with just my shirt. Yeah. That's okay. I was going to say something and then I forgot what it was. Yeah. And it was good, but that's okay. All right. Oh, I, w- I do remember. He's a cool guy, yeah. If if my mom was still alive, we joked that she would call him like Danny Zuko or Mr. <laughs> cool. Okay. But we have a 16-year-old who doesn't always right. think we're cool. Right. So, you know, everybody has their own idea yeah. of what's cool and what's not cool. And we may look like cool parents on the outside, but it's still a lot of work. Yeah. And sometimes our kid doesn't like <clears> us <throat> and sometimes she does. And it's, it's a job. Yeah. And it's a tough one. And so if we can make it look easy or look like we're, you know, doing the best, we're doing the best job job that we yeah. can for sure it's funny because i don't i don't feel uh that whole cool thing i don't i don't <laughs> feel it you yeah. know I, and i'm to me i picture myself as like you know the shortest kid in my class until fifth grade curly hair freckles yeah white as a ghost uh not cool at all that's what makes you cool <laughs> though but you know that's and now it's just you know old old man bod Bald head. I love your old man bod beard, but love no. it. you know I'll take it. I don't. I don't mind. I I know that. What's better is that I keep cool company. Yeah, for sure. And between my family and my band, it doesn't get any cooler. Yep, yeah. for sure. I should get to another reading. Yes. Yes. How much time do I have left? We might have to go a few over. Okay. Um, I have a couple of dogs because there's a couple of dogs I wanted to get to. First, this is for Jennifer. Uh, she said, this is Bentley who left us one year ago. Is he okay with us welcoming another... Sorry, my nose. Sorry. Is he okay with us welcoming another pup into our home? Side is note. Is that the retriever? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, what is the avocado tree? I, I wanted to do this because I want to know what this avocado tree about. And what's interesting is that, like, when I read this, I don't want to tune into the dog. I read this earlier, right? Wow. I don't want to tune into the dog. So I'm just like anybody else going, what's the avocado tree? What are you talking about? Tell me. But I don't want to tune in, so I'm not finding out. Do you know what I mean? Right. That's how it works for me. At least. Got it. So anyways, let's talk to Bentley. We've met Bentley before. Jennifer is a friend of ours. He's a good friend of ours. Yes. Uh, I can't believe it's been a year since he passed because it's only been like a little over a year since we saw him because I did a medium circle at her house. Yeah. That was February of, that was like right before the Rona hit. Yep. So, okay. Anyways, Bentley. 
Bentley. I don't think I have to tell you this, but Bentley sent the new dog to you. There were signs that that's what was happening. And he's, I love this look on the, his face in this picture because it's very much the look that he's giving me right now. Like, are you serious right now? <laughs> like, do you really have to ask that question if we're okay with the new dog? <laughs> Give me a break. He's so cute. I, I miss Bentley. He's such a sweet dog. But I want to know about this avocado. What is the avocado tree? What is with the avocado tree? So I'm going to ask him and see what he shows us. All right. So... The first thing that I saw, and I don't know, it'll make sense to you, and it'll develop hopefully, is this avocado tree, and that the avocados are falling off and opening up. What I'm seeing is them hitting the ground, and one side has the the seed, you know, one side does it, and it's like it's just opening it up. My assumption here is that. This has something to do with that he liked avocados and now he's gone and these avocados are maybe doing something different or I'm not sure, but it's definitely, he says it's definitely a sign from him. Um, you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about. So it's funny, you know, when you hear these things and you're like, this makes no sense to me and I feel like I'm dumb or wrong by, you know, but that's how these, these, these work. And so that's why it's always nice to have somebody here to confirm. I don't have her to confirm, so she'll confirm later. But this is what I'm seeing, that there's the avocado falling off of the tree and splitting in two, and that I think when he was alive, he would eat them or something. There's some relation here. But this is a sign from him, and food for his friends is what he's saying. I think that... Birds. Like, yeah, for birds. This is weird. It's almost like, it's almost like when he would get the avocado... He would leave some of it for the birds. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's like he's still leaving it for the birds, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. But we'll have to hear. I love when these types of things, right. but I wish she was here to tell me what this is about. But she's when not. you first started saying it, that's what I heard was like either, I don't know if I heard I or he loved avocado. Avocado. Yeah. Which is an interesting thing for yeah. dogs like. Oh, look, Snoresby here is yeah. now snoring. He was really quiet, but now he's like, you're talking to dogs. Now I'm going to snore. <laughs> so so that's what I think that is. So, um, yeah, you'll have to let me know about that, Jennifer, because that's, that's cool. I want to know what this is about. That's cool. And then we'll share it next week on our show. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he, he loves you and he misses <clears throat> you and he definitely, the German Shepherd, the German Shepherd entered Jennifer's life the same way that the Golden Retriever exited with pneumonia. Mm. So it was really weird how that worked. And I was like, that is the one of the biggest signs. Like, yeah. absolutely, that That's this funny. is meant to be. And that was from, from Bentley, the, the new cool. dog. Um, yeah. And the new so. puppy's good now. He doesn't yeah. Have He's got his issues. But, right. you know, German Shepherds are very mouthy dogs. And she yeah. has some issues with his mouth. But, you know, he, he likes to put it around the little dog. He was so cute with that one picture in his floppy, one <laughs> floppy ear. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> he is adorable. So, Okay. Uh, let's see how much time we have. Okay. We can go over a okay. little something. <sighs> oh, I have so many here. Uh, let's see. Let's do another question for you. Um, did you believe in heaven before this? Yeah, I did. I had a different understanding. I sought religion, not by my parents. I was never forced. Thank you, mom and dad for doing that. Yeah. <clears throat> I was never forced that route, but I did uh, seek it myself um, at about like 19. I was at that age where I needed something deeper. I needed answers to like, you know, when I stare up at the sky and the stars, what, what, what is all this, you know? Yeah. So yes, I absolutely did. Um, and I think I always did from somewhere deep inside as a little kid too. Yeah. I just had a different perception of what that is, the heaven. I think... The biggest thing for me was that I ruled out hell, that that no longer exists. And yeah. I truly believe that. that yes. There is no such place. I do too. And that was probably the hardest thing for me about knowing about heaven was struggling with this. But then there's this hell. Yeah. And which one do I go to? Right. You know, and <clears throat> so I've been much more enlightened in over the last couple years and have my soul is just calmed down like completely about that yeah. whole thing. It's been nice, yeah. yeah. 
for both of us. But yeah, for you, I've seen such a huge difference in that right. in you in that way. You know, it just like it was like a late a weight lifted yeah. off your shoulders. And I think there's a lot of people who walk around in the world worried about that. Yes. You know, like, well, I've done, I'm not perfect. None of us are. That's the whole idea why we're here. We're here to learn. Yeah. We weren't, we weren't put here or asked to come here expecting to be perfect. No, absolutely. So. Yep. That was a good question. Let's see another one for me. <clears throat> um, I think this is a good one for our, our listeners. Uh, what is the rainbow bridge like? And are all our pets there? Um, the Rainbow Bridge to me, and it's funny because I recently saw a TikTok video that looked like what I see. It's just a big, open, green field. And it's just, these dogs can run and run and run. And the cats, they like to play with, the, you know, the little bugs. They'll watch the bugs and the butterflies. And they, nobody hurts anybody. No. It's all it's all very nice and chill. But there was a TikTok video of this dog being let off the leash and just running and running and running down this, like, it was like football fields worth of grass. And yeah. he's just running. And that's what the Rainbow Bridge looks like to me. Yeah. When I when I try to figure out, like, sometimes I, I do lost pet readings and I have to figure out if the pet is lost. I mean, if he's uh, dead or alive. And a lot of the time this will be the first way that I'll know that the pet has passed is I will see the rainbow bridge and there is a rainbow. I do see a rainbow, but it's not like, you know, an actual bridge. I just see a rainbow and the big green open field. Right. And then they show me when they're there, whatever it is that they like to do. Right. Um, and then they'll show me people that they're with. And it's not like they're separate from the other spirits. Everything is together, but this is just tends to be where they show me that they are hmm. this big, open, beautiful field of right. green. And it's like this brilliant green that, we've never even really experienced here. Right. You know, it's pretty Yeah, incredible. cause when you think about our pets here, they're reliant on us. Yes. Right. For food, water to stay alive. Yeah. But they're still a wild animal. Yes. Essentially they're domesticated, but they're an animal. Yes. You know, derived from something wild down the road. Yeah. So once they're able to go there, it, it almost seems apropos. They don't really need to hang out with you all the time. Right. They don't need you to fill up their water bowl or their food yeah. bowl. But you can visit them and hang out with them anytime you want. But they would prefer to be with their energy kind doing what yeah. it is that they wanted to do, you know? Yeah, for sure. Be, I think that's part of the bridge. It's like there's a bridge for us to be there with them all the time. Yeah. But we're a different energy. Yeah. I think on our intelligence level and overall. So our goals and what we're doing in this life yeah, they're different very different than theirs. Yeah, they um, really, I read something the other day that really <clears throat> stuck with me. And that's that animals are here to help us along our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. They're here to teach us things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they, do they have a soul? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But they, their soul reincarnates a lot faster than ours does too. So when you ask, are all of our pets there? Yes, but... I don't know how it works when like one dog has been, you know, one soul has been like three or four different dogs that you've had. I, we all know each other by our soul's recognition, mm -hmm. but as a human, it's very hard for me to comprehend that. So all of our pets are there, but they, some might be combined into one soul, yeah. you know, that makes sense, but they yeah. all are, are all there. Right. All there. Uh, let's see for both of us. Uh, how do family and older friends, as opposed to newer ones, treat you as opposed to like before, before we learned about these spiritual gifts? I I wouldn't say different. I mean, you know, some people want to talk to you yeah, about this kind of thing. And then some, it's not their cup of tea. Yeah. I don't take it personally. No, I, I've actually had very good response especially with people that have known me a long time you know yeah, i have too um i was worried that th that i was gonna lose a lot of friends but i haven't the people no. that mattered they are still there um my lifelong best friend allison i had never told her really about my abilities even with animals it was not something that we talked about and when i came out of the closet about it she said this makes a lot of sense. It <laughs> yeah. makes, if you know me, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. It really does. Yeah. I think my brother is probably the one that has the hardest time with it. We right. don't really talk about it. Like the other day, um, it was mom's anniversary of her passing and we were talking and I, she was giving me messages and I'm like, really, we're going to do this. 
And I, she's like, you got to deliver them. So I told them, I'm like, you're going to have something with work. Something's coming up with work and it's a big yes. So whatever it is, you know, do it. And then like a day or two later, he messages me and we're talking and he says, oh, by the way, I got some good news that I'm going to be working, you know, just a couple days, but it's for a special event. You know, they asked me if I could. And I said, yes. I was like, did you remember what I said a couple of days ago that you were, you know, and he's like, oh yeah, you did. And then keeps going. <laughs> so I just, and I mentioned to him, I'm like, I'm, I know that this is weird for you. You know, I, he just kind of like floats over it. Yeah. He just, and I understand he's 10 years younger than me. He does have these abilities himself. Mom has told me that mm-hmm. to tell him and he doesn't really want anything to do with them, which is fine. Maybe sure. later in life he will. So I don't take it personally <clears throat> We don't, we just don't really talk about it much. Mm. I'm just the type of person really too, that if you are, if you know me, I'm not going to shove it down your throat. I'm going to kind of use your energy to see if you're comfortable talking about it at all. Right. And if I feel that you're not comfortable talking about my, my work, I won't talk about it. If I feel like you are, then I might test the waters and throw some things out there. There's a different energy that comes with it, you know? So, um, Yeah. No, I mean, because I think to, you know, a total stranger, we would probably just seem pretty average, yeah. like that we can have fun with the best of them and whatever, yeah. you know, I, unless you know us or have stumbled across what we do, then you know the type of person we are, but we don't go out in public and, yeah. and you know, no. preach that. It's, I don't feel the need to, Yeah, you know, no, I mean, not at all. even here, it's not. I'm not preaching anything. I'm just simply sharing our experience, my own experience right? in this journey. Yep. That's what we wanted to do was document this journey because your mom said, start this podcast, yep. suggested that we do this mm-hmm. a couple times before we did. And I won't lie. Yeah. I was a little nervous. Like, Ooh, man, we're really stepping out on a limb here. I still get nervous. You know, like, cause before every episode. nobody really knew at that point. On a vaster scale, yeah. What your gifts were, they were just sort of coming out. I just came out, you yeah. know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sharing it even with my parents, but they can kind of see, yeah, some of the things I've told them that were going to happen have yeah. happened. Yeah, that's that you shared with me. Yeah, about my life. Yeah, they're all kind of coming to the surface now. You know, it right. takes time for those things to happen. So it was a risk, but it was worth it. And yeah. it's still worth it. You know, we don't make money at this. We just do it because we we want to help others to believe that it's possible. Yep. And I, I learned something during the first year of this journey was that anybody that was going to not want to be around me because of what I do for a living doesn't need to be in my life anyways. Yeah. And it's that's hard to say and hard to really do, but it's really, really true. And it naturally just happens. The people that are not supposed to be in your life, they just, they exit, you mm-hmm. know? And there has been a lot of exiting and entrance, interesting mm-hmm. right now. But mm-hmm. the, the important people, the people that I've always <laughs> felt are my friends. They have stuck by my side. Mm-hmm. And that's what's important. And same with you. I don't have other family really besides my brother so right. you know it, it didn't really matter to me what my family thought yeah um but my friends yeah i was concerned i was but i'm not anymore i really don't care if you don't like what i do then sorry this is i'm proven to myself and everybody else a million times over that these are my abilities and if you still don't believe them and you don't you know whatever that's fine yeah we just you know i can agree to disagree right. um people are not mean to me yeah. which is great i th- i was expecting that they were going to be yeah you know but no it's gone a lot better than i thought that it was going to absolutely yeah for sure um i want to do another reading because right. this one's important to me okay so i have a pet sitting client that I did a reading for when we did um, one of the Speaking to Spirits episodes and her grandfather was in a car accident and he came through and told her that she was going to be moving soon. She did. She moved. Wow. And she, in her move, she took her four pit bulls with her. Um, unfortunately, one passed shortly after the move and it's been really, really hard for her. And it, so I wanted to communicate with Tank and see how he's doing. Nice. Um, I had this horrible feeling that one of her two boys was going to pass. I just thought it was going to be the other one for some reason. I think because he's having more physical problems than this one was having. But this one kind of came out of the blue, you know. 
Okay. So Tank, uh, it's been a while since I've seen Tank, and so I forget, you know, these certain things. But he has this waddle that he does, and he immediately came in with the waddle. And, you know, I was like, oh, <laughs> there you are. There's the Tanky. And he's waddling, waddling in. Um, he's oh, so we? cute. Yeah, oh, we? He's so cute. And he is just happy. He's a happy, happy dog. Um, you know, he's telling me, okay, this was a hard situation for her because the two boys didn't get along. Okay. And so she had to keep them separate. And so this now for, for her, it may feel weird to not have another dog, but he actually is telling me that this happened for a reason that I feel like it was going to happen originally before you moved, but there was something in the universe that said, no, she can't handle that. Let's, let's wait until afterwards. So I hope that that was a better decision. I, I feel like they, they did make the best decision there, but it was his time. And in order for you to move on with your, your life, so to speak, this is the way that it had to progress because this is going to be a lot easier for you. And I hate to say that because I hate to tell people that their animals pass for a reason, yeah. but we all go yeah. and there comes a point where it's like, we can't do anything anymore because our body has decayed and it's just time. And that's kind of what had happened with tank care is that even though it came on really suddenly, he was older and it was his time and this, you know, he went out suddenly and that's, that's very hard um it was like a couple of days i believe um i believe he had mangiosarcoma that's what it feels like like the uh what do you call that like a tumor on the spleen and then it ruptures Mm -hmm. so i think um that's what happened here but so it was really quick but what he's telling me is that this is in the long run it's going to be easier for you to manage some of the things that you need to manage in your new life where you live where you just moved to um and so you know, that doesn't help the grief. It yeah. doesn't make it any easier, but he really did feel like it was important for you to know that. Why? I don't know. You probably do. Um, but that was the main message that he was going through. And he uh, he says that he appreciates all of the effort that you did to protect him over the years and to make sure that he was happy and healthy and had a great life. And he did. And, you know, his routine was interesting because she would have to rotate the boys, Mm -hmm. but they don't look at it any differently. You know, now the other one has full run of the house and he's like, whoa, I'm out all the time. But that's what they knew before. And so that wasn't a problem for them. He That was his life. He loved it. And so he really enjoyed his life. So he said, don't ever regret any of those things that happened, they're all again, life lessons. That's and, cool. Yeah. And he's going to come back to you later. Not nice. now. So. Thanks tank. Yes. Thanks. Tanky. I forgot about your waddle. I was going to be stuck. It was so cute. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Too cute. Okay. Do we do more? Or should we call it? It's up to you. Uh, where are we at? You want to do run one? You know what? Actually, I'll tell you what I want to do. What do you want to do? I want to talk real quick about what our listener said that they want to talk about. And then I have a couple more listener comments, not questions. Okay. So topics that they would like to hear about. Okay. These are the things that we'll talk about more in the future now that we know. Cool. Um, animals, aliens, personal psychic experience. I would love to share the experiences that we've had. We've had so many, you know, with, with clients and just in our own lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, conspiracy theories. Danny loves conspiracy theories. <laughs> I Past do. lives, Nostradamus. These were a few of the things that we got. And then one person said, I love when you both brainstorm about out of world topics like the afterlife, superpowers, and etc." Cool. Um, they said that as far as suggestions to make the show better, um, special guests, which we have always talked about doing. I think we're waiting for, you know, things to move. Yeah. For us to move and have a studio there. And then we can talk about expanding yeah. things that we do. <clears throat> Um, one person said, nothing, just keep doing what you're doing. Another said, I feel like it's perfect. Hmm. And that was very sweet. And then one said, call in for live questions or readings, but I'm not sure how that would work. Right. Those are all great. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, definitely. And we definitely will take those into consideration. <clears throat> I love to know what our listeners want to talk about because I don't know, you know, I'm just, we're going with whatever we feel, whatever right. intuitively comes to us. But there's definitely things that we're, we don't even think about that right. when our listeners tell us, we're like, oh Yeah. Right. That's great. And if you have given us things, you know, like message us and we haven't done them yet, message me again because they go like the thoughts. Woo, <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so then on when I had asked if they had any questions for both of us, a couple of pe- a few people had not questions, but they had statements. And I just wanted to read these real quick because right, I like sweet. these. Uh, just 
keep on keeping on and thank you. I found y'all on Facebook after my mother's passing and it's been a huge blessing. And then the next one is you are both awesome and I enjoy this show so much. And the third one was thank you for keeping me sane for two years. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and the last one was love the hosts and the show. So I just want to thank everybody for this because they it helps us to know that what we're doing is worth it and that, you know, we should keep doing right. it. That's really all that matters. Yeah. That something gets somebody gets something out of it. Yep. Really? Exactly. Even if it's just one person, which I know it's already way more than that. It's right. just it's worth it. It's right. worth the couple of hours we put a week into it for sure. And yeah. then some. So Absolutely. I will ask you one question. Sure. Like in this last year, what have you gotten most out of? Like you know, what has been the strong point for you this year? Like in this in my spiritual journey? Yeah, this part of it. Um Gosh, there's so much. Um, Letting the universe decide has really been the biggest thing for me is that I realize now that I don't have as much control as I thought I did. I have the control to steer this ship in the direction that I want it to go. But as far as what really happens, I don't have that kind of control. The house that we're moving into, it was picked for us. Yes, it has pretty much everything that we asked for. But I didn't really have control of that. I was just told the house is coming and, you know, keep looking for it. Yeah. It, I've just learned to surrender the fact that whatever these things are that are coming, the universe knows best. And I am just here to do my job, to help people, to try and make the world a better place. Mm. And I surrendered. I surrendered, I think, in the last year fully to yeah. that. Fully. I still do. I still worry. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. do. But um, I, when I start to worry, I think, what are you worrying about? Because you know that unless that that's a part of the plan, it's not going to happen. And, right. you know, I know that there's certain things that are just not a part of the plan. Right. So trusting the universe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I should ask you the same question. What about you? Uh, well, for me, I think it's uh, part of what you said is I've this year I've learned to trust a lot the process i've learned to trust the process yeah and i've learned to trust whatever you want to call it universe god angels if they whatever their real title is i'm sorry if i'm not calling it that <laughs> but them them i've learned to trust them yeah it them uh the other is manifestation learning yes. about that i really can do what i want to do yeah in this life it's going to take hard work Everything does. Yeah. But I really can. And I haven't even really fully got there yet. Yeah. But everything else has lined up exactly how it was shared it was going to line up. Yep. So. I have a question from the other side for us. <clears throat> if we could go back three years to the beginning and not do it at all because of all the hard work, would we still do it or yes. would we not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. Sorry. This changed my life. Yeah. It changed my life. For the better. Yeah, it did. And I would never want to go back. I, I wouldn't want to look forward. at the world the same. No. That's when you know the other side is taking over you. That was such a strong emotion of just, no, this is my life now. And I'm so happy. And I'm so thankful to the universe for everything that they've given to us. And I hope that more more and more people can see this. Because when you do, when you accept this into your life, it's such an amazing feeling. And it just changes you so much. Yeah. Who? Okay. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know. That doesn't mean that you don't have good days and bad days. That's that's just being a human. But the change from here to three years ago is... Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't even believe that our lives have gone the way that they have, and I'm so thankful. Yeah, me I too. I can't even be more thankful. So no matter how much work it looks like to do this spiritual journey, it's so worth it. It's I recommend it to anybody. It's so worth it because you learn about yourself and the universe and everything else. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, okay. And we just don't have to live this life so afraid. No. I have so much less fear. Yeah. About so many different things that I carried around 
And this kind of goes to the young lady, was her name Melissa? Melissa, yeah. That you will make yourself sick. Yes. If you carry it around. Yep, you will. You got to let it go. You got to you gotta cleanse yeah. for sure. Yep. Okay. Well, right. on that note, whew, the two-year anniversary <laughs> episode. There Ends you go. <laughs> tears. Two weeks in a row I've cried. <laughs> That's all right. And some tears, yeah. That's oh. good. All right. Well, okay. Thank you. That was good. That yeah, was nice. it was good. I'm looking forward to the, the year three. Yeah. And our new home. And we'll have a new studio eventually. We'll record in a bedroom until then. Yeah. Um, so it may not be the as nice as quality yeah. as this, but we'll do our best. But yeah. It'll be pretty dang close. Yep. But, but yeah, going yeah third we're year. starting over. Yep. So got to build it again. Yep. Build it. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, um, would you like to share your page before yes. we say goodbye? Uh, you can find everything about me on my website, samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. And if you would like to send us a message for you know show, show suggestions or whatever, spiritualjoneses at gmail.com. Nice. And you, sir? Yes. Uh, for my art, djonesartcollection.com. For the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram and Facebook. And for the music, gypsybrown.com for the web, at Gypsy Brown Music for Instagram, and at Gypsy Brown Band for Facebook. Yay. That's it. Beautiful. Well, we hope we didn't make you cry too much. <laughs> yeah. And we hope you got something out of this, yes, everybody. Yes, we do. Thanks for all your input yep. and your support and your love, yep. um, your suggestions, your feedbacks, comments. We love it. Thank yep. you. That's the only reason why we're here. Absolutely. So. And we hope that... Um, have a great week. Yeah, we do. And until next week. Bye.